Angela ripping up the dance floor. Very good, Angela. Well, I'll, I'll get you a drink in a minute, oh, love. I've got a Sit yourself down. Off. Sit yourself knocking down. Knocking me in the face. Right. Well now, then, Angela. Uh, here's a tricky one. OK, listen up, everybody. What does Northumberland have in common with Eastern Australia? Well, Joe Crowley has discovered a surprising connection made by two communities 10,000 miles apart. Oh, she's off again. The Angel of the North casts a long shadow over not just the northeast of England, but today over a group from the Aboriginal community in Brisbane who are here on a month-long walkabout, a cultural exchange with the residents of Ashington. Now, at first glance, this might seem an unlikely alliance, but these two groups from opposite sides of the world who are so different in so many ways actually have a very similar shared experience. The biggest similarity is that both communities have got very strong-minded, determined people. The sharing systems between families and communities and how they deal with problems, that's very similar. There's yeah, high unemployment being removed from cultural, spiritual connection to land, which is very important to Aboriginal people. Both communities have never recovered from the destruction of industry and way of life. For Ashington, it was the closure of the mines in 1988. And for the Indigenous Australians, the loss of ownership of the land that once sustained them. Today, Aboriginal elders Mary Graham and Bob Weatherall are being shown round the Woodhorn Colliery, which is now a museum. Oh, yeah. How important is it to see this place, the real heart of this old mm. mining community? Definitely. We were really impressed with our first visit here, the historical story of it and the things that people went through. There are some museums like this in Australia that hardly anybody goes to, but here it's a living place. And art is so important in, in representing your history, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's a footprint yeah. Yeah. of where yeah. we've been, what we've done. I mean, this here, what it's doing is basically showing the blood, sweat and tears of what was yeah. spilt. Yeah, by the, the man, spirit. by the men who spilt it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and drawn by the people yeah. who were involved in, in those mines and that whole struggle. And it gives us a good idea about what we should be having over yes. in Australia, our own living yes. history centres. Can you imagine mm. if a, a team of anthropologists did this for the miners, came in and they're the experts on how to do things and how to display things? That's what they would do in Australia for, with us. Really? Yes, we wouldn't be in charge of it at all. So to see this is quite inspiring, to see how good it can be when you can do Very it yourselves. Inspiring. Oh, yes. During their stay, the visitors will attend a two-day conference, take part in cultural events and stay with the Ashington group, who in turn stayed with them in Australia. The more you relate to someone, the more you can help them in community. In the Aboriginal culture, when they introduce themselves, they'll tell you who they are, where they're from, a bit about the family, so you get to really know them, each person as an individual. The people I met, they can yawn, but they talk about the history, the heritage about the land, and they know so much. It's unbelievable the knowledge and wealth knowledge they've got that they can hand on. We're inspired by the fact that they are inspired and they have a lot of energy. It's given us more meaning to go back and basically re-establish that togetherness and that unity within our own community. Thank you, Joe. Now, earlier on, we asked you for four tours uh, if you'd met any of